talk a little bit about it, but can't talk about it, you know. Um, Miami's working its way to looking like what Miami should look like. And I think what you're seeing from in terms of recruiting, um, monstrous as it applies to anything that's legal and compliant, right? That's a legal statement. So, um, and that being said, you know, get to grab one of those PB and J's and hit the road and be at the first school tomorrow morning, bright and early, and keep it going. Miami recruiting had been a little flat heading from the spring into the summer and really into the fall. Just not what it was in Mario Cristobal's first year at Miami when he got recruiting going with a bang. But last Thursday, the Canes made a statement. And I'm not talking about the beatdown on Bethune-Cookman. I'm talking about the commitment they landed from five-star 2025 defensive lineman Armando Blunt of Miami Central High School. That video that we showed you is Mario Cristobal's post-game comments about recruiting. He was saying this after the Bethune-Cookman win, but per NCAA rules, he can't mention a recruit publicly by name until they've officially signed, but this was a clear reference to the news he received just before kickoff. So probably four to five hours before this press conference, Kane's recruiting came alive with what might have been Mario's biggest commitment on the recruiting trail since arriving to Miami. We're going to talk all about it. Let's get into it. But first, Miami fans, hit the subscribe button to the On3 Recruits page. We were doing this over on the On3 page, but now we need a channel dedicated only to recruiting, and we need you to subscribe. All right. Yeah, I know we're talking 2025 recruiting, but Armando Blunt is one of the best in the country. He goes six foot three, 265 pounds. He's a five star plus defensive lineman, meaning every recruiting service has him rated as a five star, basically a five star consensus. He's the number one recruit in the state of Florida and the battle for him was on this summer. He took six trips to Miami, six trips to Florida, three to Florida State and two to Alabama. Let's bring on Steven Wagner of Kane Sport for more. Steven, we previewed this visit of Armando Blunt arriving for that Texas A&M game and said how big it would be. But were you expecting it to have this commitment to happen now? It did surprise me a little bit just because I thought he would wait a little bit longer after he released his top five, which he just released his top five a few days before he committed to Miami. And so I think there were quite a few of us who thought, yeah, he probably is going to, you know, kind of feel out the recruiting process a little bit more. But I think he just really felt comfortable in the setting uh, and the environment that Mario Cristobal has created down there at Miami. Mario Cristobal and this staff have recruited him incredibly hard, really from the moment that they arrived on campus. Uh, this is a guy who, even in the waning hours just before the August dead period, Cristobal, Joe Salavea, Jason Taylor, they managed to get him down to campus for just a quick last second unofficial visit in literally the last few hours before the August dead period would hit. They have maximized every opportunity to get in form of it, to get any sort of interaction with Armando Blunt, and that has really, really paid off. They've recruited him incredibly well. They've recruited they've recruited his mother incredibly well. And really, the way that they've recruited his mother, in a sense, is almost uh, as important as the way that they've recruited him. Um, he's said a few times that his mother really is going to support his decision and she's going to rock whatever he's going to rock. Uh, but he told me whenever I had the chance to talk to him a few weeks ago, he said he'll just walk into the living room sometimes just randomly out of the blue and Mario Cristobal will be FaceTiming his mother or Jason Taylor, Joe Salavea uh, will be talking to his mother. Um, this has really been an all hands on deck effort from really every conceivable angle since the moment Mario Cristobal arrived on campus. Yeah. And Mario's had some notable moments. I mean, there's been some huge commitments, right? We got Francis Malagoa, you got Samson Okunlola, uh, added Mark Fletcher from Ohio State there at the end. But do you think, and I am I exaggerated here, is this one of Mario's, or if is it the biggest commitment that Mario's landed since he's been at Miami? There's a very, very strong argument to say that this is the biggest commitment Cristobal has landed since he's been at Miami. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I do think this is Mario Cristobal's biggest get since he's gotten to Coral Gables. Uh, you're talking about a guy who is top six on all four of the major recruiting sites. Uh, I had the chance to talk to Charles Power about this the other day. 
and power is incredibly high on him for really, really good reason. Uh, he really broke down just what makes Armando special and kind of that versatility that I think is really going to help elevate his game. Um, this is a guy who kind of depending on his how his body shapes out, uh, he could both play as an interior defensive lineman and the three technique, or he could be a full-on edge rusher coming off the edge. I've had the chance to see him in person a few times going to practices and games. Right now, I think he's a little bit more refined uh, off the edge than on the interior personally, but still wildly, wildly talented, incredibly versatile. And he really is one of these guys who – is an absolutely essential must get for Mario Cristobal. I mean, these are the kinds of talents that Cristobal was brought to Miami mm -hmm. to keep home. I mean, this is a guy who, like, I talked about this uh, with some other media members the other day. I believe Armando Blunt is going to have the same impact to the 2025 class as what Jeremiah Smith had to the 2024 class, just in terms of the importance and the level of must get for Miami. This is a top six recruit on all of the major sites, uh, the number four overall prospect on the on three industry ranking. And he is right down the road from your campus. He is right there in your backyard. He's visited campus six times. And now that Miami is winning, it's kind of one of those deals where there's not really much of an excuse to let a program like a Florida State or an Ohio State come in and swoop an elite target in Mario Cristobal's backyard, uh, like some of those programs had done for so, so long um, up until Cristobal arrived. So what do you think's gone on? Like, why is this happening? And I, and I say, why is this happening? And what I mean is, Miami is starting to recruit its backyard again. And, and we know that Miami's at its best when it's landing the best players out of the, the Dade, Miami, Broward, kind of the South Florida area. They landed JoJo Trader right at the end of summer. He's a 2024 borderline five-star wide receiver out of Chaminade Madonna High School. And then now Armando Blunt. What's changed with Miami recruiting to start getting back these elite prospects? Well, I think what we're seeing now, um, especially with the 2025 recruits, because Miami got a four-star on Sunday after the Texas A&M game, and now they just got Armando Blunt, um, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, the proof being in the pudding for Mario Cristobal. Now he finally has evidence that he can point to on-field proof that he can point to and say, this is what I envision my program looking like whenever we're winning. This is what I envision our system looking like whenever it's working. And last year was a really, really rough, really rocky start. And that lack of production on really both sides of the ball, I think really ended up having substantial effects on the 2024 class. That was a really, really big reason why Jeremiah Smith committed to Ohio State instead of Miami was because of the offensive struggles and just the overall program struggles. But now that Miami's off to this 3-0 start, granted uh, one of those wins was over Miami of Ohio and the other win was over Bethune-Cookman, but still the offense looks greatly improved. Tyler Van Dyke looks back looks like he's back to his old self. Uh, the Texas A&M game for the recruits that were in attendance, they all said that place was rocking. They loved the environment. They loved the atmosphere. They loved the way the Canes looked. And I think that this is really lending some optimism uh, to these recruits kind of about the future of Miami and mm -hmm. what they think the future can hold for Mario Cristobal's program. Because up until last season, Mario Cristobal was known as you know, the guy who won multiple Pac-12 titles at Oregon. He was the guy who went to multiple New Year's Six Bowls at Oregon. He was a guy who was only, you know, a few weird snaps or maybe a flute game or two away from going to the college football playoff while, ever, while he was at Oregon. And I think that everyone had kind of been waiting to see – Mario Cristobal's team kind of return to that level of production, that level of winning. And I think that they're definitely seeing that now. Mm. Yeah, it feels like that proof of concept, even like you said, even though it's only three games. Now, Miami's going to have to maintain this, but let's say that they do. The 2025 class, they're sitting at number seven in the country right now, but that 2024 class is at 18. Can this class finish inside the top 10 or right around the top 10 if Miami continues down this path and continues winning? I absolutely believe that this is going to have a direct effect or this there's going to be a direct correlation between how much Miami wins this season and what their final recruiting ranking is going to be. Um, 
if Miami is able to get to nine or heck even ten wins, whenever you look at Miami's schedule and how it kind of favorably shakes out uh, for them, all of a sudden you know they get Clemson at home. Clemson isn't what a lot of people thought they were going to be. Um, they should be favored in a lot of games. They have to go to North Carolina. That'll be a tough one. And then they also have to go to Florida State. That'll be another tough one. But you look at the schedule and all of a sudden you tell yourself, man, I could really see Miami getting to nine or possibly ten regular season wins if they stay healthy and if they keep playing at the level that they've been playing at. And I think if you get to ten wins and you start to get in the mix for uh, for an ACC championship bid – and maybe even getting to the ACC championship game, I think a lot of very, very interesting conversations would have to start happening. Um, now, there aren't a ton of uncommitted uh, top, top recruits left on Miami's board. Uh, LJ McCray, Zay Mincy, Aiden Breland, those are a couple of guys who really come to mind. But mm -hmm. guys like Jeremiah Smith and David Stone, two five-star plus guys who committed to Ohio State and Oklahoma respectively, both of them are still very much on Miami's board, and Miami really is going to keep recruiting them to the end. But I think that if Miami gets to that maybe nine or ten win threshold and all of a sudden they're vying for an ACC championship game bid or maybe even a New Year's Six game, I think some very interesting conversations start to happen around the time that Miami starts to make those December pushes. All right. Well, let's see what happens. But today we're celebrating the commitment of five-star plus defensive lineman Armando Blunt to Miami. Maybe change the narrative here on the recruiting trail a little bit, and we'll see if 2024 recruiting also picks up. But for now, Stephen Wagner, thank you for dropping by the inside scoop. Absolutely. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.